Hey Dave, good afternoon. Um, are you planning on keeping your rotation pretty much the same with Walker going in one, Clayton going in game two? Yes, yes we are. Absolutely, Alana. How much can you appreciate the fact that things went pretty according to plan in games one and two of the wild card round to be able to line up your rotation that way and, and have a better sense of how you want to use your guys? Yeah, and, and I think that we're, we're very pleased um, first to get Walker out of that first one feeling good um, to be able to make this start on uh, in game one and then also obviously the way Clayton threw in game two and then to get him back online as well. And um, so that certainly puts us in a great spot. And now you're talking about uh, May, Gonsolin, Julio. You know, those guys are – we're planning on pitching three. If there's a four, if there's a five. And, you know, there might be a situation where those guys are available uh, in any of the preceding games as a side day to then make a start. So um, we have a lot, of op a lot of good options. Now that you know that you're playing the Padres in this round, does that change anything as far as your roster is concerned, particularly with Floro? Yeah, um, it, it does. So we're going we're to make a decision um, soon. But I think it's going to be adding a pitcher, and uh, Floro is a good name. <laughs> and uh, we'll probably uh, take out a position player. Do you think having played in Arlington earlier this year benefits you guys? Uh, certainly, certainly. Um, you know, just the turf itself is kind of like Arizona. Um, knowing the ballpark, getting it off the bat, the reads off the bat, how the infield plays. Um, as I understand it, I think the roof's going to be open. But when we were here, it was closed. Um, so just kind of adjusting to that, which we're going to have one of these days with the roof open to see. But uh, certainly three games is better than none. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Good luck. You got it. Thank you. Next question is from Dave Vasse. Go ahead. Dave, have you guys settled on a, a game three starter yet, or is that up to what happens in the first two games? Yeah, I think that right now we're just going to leave it open um, and each one of those guys is going to be available in one and two and, and we'll kind of see how it plays out, Dave. But uh, all three are still built up. So, you know, I'm sure one of those guys will, will take down game three. MLB Network showed parts of your workout yesterday and it showed Kenley throwing to live hitters. Where is he at? And do the mechanical adjustments that need to be made, is that enough time between um, – the last time we saw in game one to, to Tuesday, is that enough time? I think so. Um, I, I thought yesterday he threw the baseball really well. Uh, he, along with, I think, seven or eight other guys, threw to hitters. And um, I, I love the exercise that uh, our coaches came up with. Um, Kelly threw the baseball really well. So, um, like I said the other day, um, he's our closer, but there's still opportunities. And I talked to Kenley yesterday just to kind of be on the same page that there's still going to be times that I might need him in a different inning. And he's on board with whatever to help us win baseball games. And uh, it's a title, but I think that in practice, there are certain innings and certain parts of lineup that I think he's the best option. So um, we'll, we'll kind of uh, proceed that way. So being the closer doesn't necessarily mean closing the ninth inning. Not, not in every game, not in every game. And it might, but I think that just kind of putting ourselves in that uh, situation where I can't use him in a situation where I feel he's the best option uh, isn't the best decision for the Dodgers right now. And one last question, Dave, as far as that ballpark in Arlington, I, I know you mentioned the roof is going to be open. How much do you anticipate that uh, change in the way the ball flies there? Because uh, only 66 home runs were hit there in 30 games and 99 were hit at Dodger stadium. Yeah. So from what I understand, it, it does allow for the, for the ball to travel a little bit further. Um, what that means, I really don't know. Um, it, and it still just comes down to executing pitches and putting the barrel on the ball. So, um, and it's a level playing field regardless, but uh, it'll be different in the sense that we just haven't experienced it here. Next question is from Ken Gurnick. Go ahead. Dave, hey, what's the, the status in your mind of Max Muncy as far as being in the middle of your lineup? Um, he'll be in the middle of our lineup. Um, I, I still think that, you know, the first game, taking a couple walks, 
uh, the second game, I thought he got off some really good swings, just didn't um, make contact. But I still think that he's seeing the baseball considerably better, and I, I like him where he's at. And that's mostly off the walks, not as not so much off the actual uh, swings. No, but no, it is. The second game, I thought he took some very good swings. I mean, I, I think that, yeah, he, he missed some pitches that they executed, but I still thought the swings were considerably better than they had been at the, in the middle of the year. Next question is from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Dave, do you still plan to carry a third catcher? Yeah, we're, 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 we're I mean, I don't know. Uh, or that's kind of one of the conversations we're, we're going to um, talk about the third catcher, um, Terrence Gore off the bench, things like that, that we still got to kind of uh, lock down. And uh, what did you see from uh, Cody in that first series? I thought there was fight. I, I, I thought there was compete, and uh, he spoiled some pitches. I thought he took some really good swings, and when he got down in the count, he fought. And, um, you know, that's all anyone can ask. And uh, you guys have been there a couple of days now. What's the bubble life like in Texas? Um, it's, uh, it's great having our families here. Um, it's different, uh, seeing the team you're, you're opposing in this series, sharing the same space. Um, the hotel itself is fantastic. Um, but, uh, it, it's a business trip, but I think the families are, are enjoying, you know, being with each other. So, uh, but it's been good. Thank you. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. Thanks for doing this, Dave. Uh, are there any limits with Walker Bueller? Are you going to need someone to piggyback with him again? You know, I, I think that, and we talked about this before, just having the few days leading up to this series and having a, you know, a, a good group of guys in the pen, good options that are available and feeling good is certainly beneficial, but I just don't know until I know. So I think with Walker right now, um, I think his finger's in a great place. And um, we'll keep an eye on him each inning, and he's probably going to be upset when the time comes. Um, but, again, we're trying to win this start and then also the next series as well to have him pitch. So we've got a good group of guys behind him, but I don't know necessarily, Bill, I can't say that it's a, a scripted or when we're going to, uh, you know, deploy our, our guys in the pen. And if the series does go five games, is he an option to pitch on three days rest? Um, I, I think if you ask me, we will see. If you ask him, that's a, a definite yes. That's one of those things I think that we just got to wait and see. How uh, the, the Padres aren't making any definitive statements about Lamette and Clevenger. How does the series change if they don't have those guys healthy? Well, I, as far as roster construction, it doesn't change. Obviously, those are two of their better starters. And to not have them, you know, they're going to have to make an adjustment with uh, how they kind of put together the roster and, and attack us as hitters. But uh, I, I think for us, we're preparing for both those guys uh, until we don't have to. After they, uh, they beat you in San Diego, the first game of that series, later Mookie Betts referred to that as, as a, a punch in the mouth and he thought the team responded well. Did you sense that at the time and how have they responded? I think our guys just responded by really playing good baseball. And we went into Petco, a team that was trying to, uh, you know, win the division and, and had a chance to come out of that series with a half game lead. And um, losing that first game the way we did, just that really had a bad inning. I think he was in that sixth or seventh inning. Um, and for us to come back and win the series there, just really was good to see from our guys. And, I think if you are looking for a turning point, that was probably one of them, and we've continued to play good baseball since. Is it a good thing to get punched in the mouth once in a while? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't mind getting punched in the mouth. I think that um, I think everyone's going to get punched in the mouth at some point in time, but um, you know, it's how you respond, uh, you know. And and our guys, to no surprise, took it and um, responded really well. Thanks, Dave. You got it. Next question is from Tim Brown. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. How are you? I'm doing well, Timmy. I'm good. 
Uh, hey, I was thinking about the fact that uh, it's early in the postseason. You guys may have a lot of games left, and Bob Melvin is sitting in your chair in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> and I'm curious, like, who cleaned out your office? And you are sitting in Chris Woodward's chair, uh, who I know you know and like very much. And how odd is that? So um, it is odd. Um, I don't know who cleaned out my office. Um, I got a text from uh, Mark Kotze, who's our quality assurance coach. He's a good friend of mine. And I just told him, lead Bob to uh, my wine. I've got good uh, high-end uh, liquors in there, some whiskeys. I've got some cigars. So uh, what's mine is theirs. You didn't lock uh, it up? I didn't, I didn't lock it up. I don't know if our clubhouse staff did, but I have no idea. They can help their, themselves to whatever they want. And as far as in Woody's office, it's like uh, – Nothing against my office at uh, Dodger Stadium, but it's like, I feel like George Jefferson. I've moved on up um, because this office is unbelievable. This facility is unbelievable. And uh, Woody left me a nice note. Did he? What, did yeah. He just wishing and you luck? Good, and... Yeah, good luck. And then also some family pictures, which was amazing. Of him, of his, his uh, Of mine, of mine. So it's kind of Woody and the head club, clubby David here uh, really uh, made me feel at home. Feels like 2020, doesn't it? All sorts That's of right. That's stuff. right. Yeah. All right, man. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next question's from. Go ahead, Eric. Dave, um, just wondering with the format, no off days during the series. Do you like the format? Do you do you think it gives you a specific advantage at all? I like the format. Um, just playing, playing after getting three days off, playing five in a row. I, I just think the format, you know, lends itself to your entire roster. So uh, as a team, as an organization that believes in depth, um, you're going to have to use all 28 guys, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I, I don't mind it. In the last week of the uh, regular season, talking about Jock uh, Peterson, when he came back, you mentioned that you weren't sure how long he might be available. Is he still available, and do you expect him to be available during the series? Uh, we do. We do. And fortunately, we got uh, Jock and his family with us uh, here to travel and be in the bubble. So I know he's uh, really in a good place w as far as that. And um, so we're just very fortunate that we have him going forward. Yes. Thanks. Next question is from Jeff Sanders. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. Um, you started, you know, you were coaching in San Diego when this Dodgers run really started. I'm wondering what your view of them closing the gap has been over the last several years. Um, as far as the Padres closing the gap? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 um, I, I think AJ, um, his, his staff, they've done a tremendous job. Um, as far as the scouting, the, the trades, um, ownership allowing for signings. Um, I think Jace has done a really nice job over there. So, yeah, there was a, bi there was a big gap, and um, they did just a good job of getting better each year. So I, I still think that we're continuing to get better, uh, and I love our ball club, love what our organization does. But uh, it's good for baseball. It's good for those guys to continue to uh, get better each year. Next question is from Kerry Osborne. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. Um, how, how much does San Diego's relentlessness on offense and their ability to kind of strike late remind you of your own offense? Um, very, a lot of similarities. Um, those guys play with a lot of uh, energy, and a lot of guys in their lineup can hurt you with the long ball. Uh, it's a very momentum-driven team. Um, they've gotten much better – as far as plate discipline. And so, yeah, there, there's a, a lot of similes on both sides. The way that both teams were so good at driving in runs late, how important does that make uh, the bullpen game in this series? It's, and it's going to really, you know, it's going to show itself because you're going to have to rely on guys and matchups in the seventh, eighth, ninth, um, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see who wins out. Um, because both teams have shown the ability to win games late and play to the last out. So um, I know that our guys are ready. I think that the, we like the matchups potentially, but we still got to go out there and execute. But again, both offenses 
can explode on you at any point in time, and especially late. Next question is from Jared Diamond. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. Uh, I'm just curious whether you think uh, the shorter regular season could benefit Kershaw at all this month, just given he's going in with so many fewer innings than he's accustomed to. I think so. I, and I don't think Clayton – I think Clayton, along with you know, all these other starters um, – Clayton is, I think he's 32. He's logged a lot of innings. Um, but number one, he's healthy. So regardless if it was a regular season or this truncated season, um, you know, saving bullets, being fresh, I think is certainly a benefit to him. But I also think it's a benefit to all these other guys that are going to toe the rubber. I got time for one more. Go ahead, Ronald. When you look at how you use someone like Morrow three years ago, I guess you pitched him, I think, 14 or 15. Are you going to be, have to be cognizant you can't do that with relievers this time with the fewer off days? And does that, how does that change how you set things up? Um, yeah, you know what? Certainly. And, and uh, you know, you're talking about – I mean, I didn't know it was 14 or 15 games, but obviously there's some off days that are baked in there. Um, but yeah, when you're talking about five in a row, I don't see anybody, if there is a game five, pitching five games in a row. Um, but it's more on, you know, how guys are feeling, how effective they are as well. And Brandon was very good for us. Thank you.